Hi and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, no matter what it is you're doing. For the free wire tutorial today, I'd like to share a super easy and accessible project with which you can use pretty much any shaped cabochon. However, today I'm going to be demonstrating with a pear-shaped cab and we're going to do a very simple but effective basket setting for this piece. So I'd like to show you that a little bit more closely on the board before we get cracking with our super fun but super accessible tutorial today. So this is the piece that we're going to work up together today. I've got a beautiful carved labradorite which I've already prepared a demonstration piece for you. But I also wanted to show you what the setting looks like without a stone inside. So we're looking to create a basket which will house, in this instance, a pear-shaped cabochon. So you have a narrower form at the front and then a wider form that sits behind and that fits the shape of your cabochon at its widest point. And then it acts like a basket, you pop the cab in, dome face into the basket, flip it over and you can choose however you want to finish that off. I've done a very, very simple corset and cross on the back of this one to show how very quickly you can make one of these up. And today's tutorial is all about how you can make something quite beautiful but quite quickly and quite simply. So that's what we're going to work towards. Let's pop that up in the corner. And this is the gemstone I'm going to demonstrate with to create that basket. So I've got a really very pretty piece of azurite today. You can see there's lovely uh, malacolor, chrysocolor colours in there. Very, very pleasant piece. Now this design works beautifully with an, a pear-shaped cabochon, but you can adapt it to suit almost any fancy shape you would like to work with. So in terms of wire, we're going to be working with 18 gauge and 26 gauge, which is one millimetre and 0.4 millimetre gauges. So for the front section, the basket section, we're going to be working to begin with, we're going to look at some one millimetre or 18 gauge. Now for the size of my cabochon, which is 40 millimetres from top to bottom, so about an inch and a half, give or take a little bit. And it's a nice kind of pear shape in that it's probably about two thirds across than it is as tall. So working with that pear shaped cabochon today, I've cut myself a 15 inch and an eight inch length of that one millimetre gauge wire. And we're going to use the shorter piece, eight inches again, at the front and the longer piece at the back because what we're looking to go for with this piece is absolute simplicity. So I'm going to just pop this over to the side as well. Hopefully I won't knock it too far but I'm guaranteed to at some point. Now to weave these two pieces of wire together I'm going to use some 0.4mm gauge wire and I've cut myself a length of 15 inches and this translates to approximately 26 gauge wire. Now for the labradorite carved piece that I used, I did a, th a five and five weave. And for the demonstration piece to use with that azurite, I did a three and three weave. Now as long as you keep those numbers the same all the way along, it's absolutely up to you which you do. It's a nice open weave so it builds quickly. 15 inches off that finer gauge, 0.4 or 26 gauge wire. And I'm going to find the midpoint of that finer gauge wire. And I'm going to attach it to the midpoint of the shorter length of the heavier wire. And I'm going to just wrap that around. Let's go for three times. And just bring those wires upwards from the heavier piece. Now there is a slight curvature in that uh, heavier gauge wire which I'm not going to worry about at the moment because we can make that form however we wish to as we move through. What we're going to do now is basically weave this all together using a basket style weave. Now a basket style weave is often referred to as a figure of eight. If you look at the wires from the end what you're looking to do is draw around wire number one and wire number two so you're uh, finer, the, sorry, the shorter length of wire at the bottom, the longer length of wire at the top, and you're going to circle around them three times, and then you're going to switch direction, so you come off the top of one side, go underneath the other wire, wrap three times around, and then cross back and forth. I'm going to take that through, take you through that all the way, 
but it is just to say that is why it's called a basket weave or a figure of eight weave. So if we look at the right hand finer wire, and again that was the centre of the fine wire on the centre of the shorter of the two lengths of heavier wire, finer gauge wire is coming over the top. So we want that to come underneath the other section of that one millimetre or 18 gauge wire and I'm going to sit that centrally as well so I found the midpoint of the 15 inch length of one millimetre gauge wire the finer gauge wire has come over the top of the short one so I'm going to take it underneath the long one and again these are centralised on those lengths of wire so because I've gone for a three weave I'm going to draw this tail of wire three times around that longer length and the gap in between needs to be demarked by how thick and heavy your cabochon is so the cab that I'm working with right now is a middle distance middle depth cabochon it's not overly deep nor is it overly curved or flat anything like that it's a fairly middle to average cab the carved labradorite I worked with was slightly heavier, so the distance between the short and the long wires was slightly longer. And it's basically judging if you think it will cover over enough of the face of the cabochon so that it will be safe inside that basket. So let's just pop that back over to the side and weave all the way around three times at the top. And you'll notice I'm joining these two lengths of one millimetre 18 gauge wire together with a diagonal line using that finer gauge wire. So the finer gauge wire is currently attached to the upper and longer of my two heavy wires. So I'm going to now bring it down underneath. So it's travelling from over the top to underneath. And I'm going to switch my grip so I can keep these two diagonal slices of wire approximately the same distance from one heavy to the other heavy. So pinching that firmly into position, I'm going to wrap now three times around the shorter or lower wire, scooch that up neatly. The finer gauge wire is again on top of the lower wire, so it goes down the centre and underneath the upper or longer wire. So again, I'm going to pinch those two together and just wrap around the upper wire three times, bringing that finer gauge wire down that central space, tightening those wires up into a neat coil. And you can see we're starting to generate this gentle zigzag design. Now, in an ideal world, what we're looking to do is to keep these zigs and zags in a straight line can just give that a very very gentle squish to make that nice and flat we want them to be the same angle and we want them to be the same length so the same distance between them and what you need to do is weave back and forth until you have enough of that weave to fit around about three quarters of the way around your cabochon so I would look to do a standard zigzag or basket weave or a figure of eight weave if you prefer for 75% of the distance around the outside of my cab. So I'm going to turn the camera off now and get that done and we'll reconvene and go on to the next step from there. So I've continued with my basket weave back and forth until I have a length of weave like so. I'll show you that on the board in a second that measures at least three quarters of the way around the lower part of my cabochon. So let's head back to the board and I'll show you how we can move on from there and what it should look like so far. So you can see I've centralised my weave in those pieces of the heavier gauge wire. If there's a longer length on one end, you can very gently pull that wire through just to make sure that your weave sits centrally. And this just gives you the best chance of having enough wires up at the top to make the bale of your choice. I've gone for a very simple five and five basket weave on that bale and it's just been wrapped around a pencil if I'm perfectly honest. So you've got quite a simple bale that you can finish off at leisure. So this measures approximately three quarters of the way around. So what you can do is just hazard a guess or rotate your cab around until that looks pretty good. You can ever so slightly stretch it or ever so slightly compress it if you need to and if you wish to you can take a moment just to make sure that those weaves are nice and straight. As we start to get up towards the very top what I want to do is to draw those wires together. Now if there is any curvature in your wire as it's come off the reel there often is I'm going to put the shorter side 
upwards for now and the longer side down underneath and that's because when I apply this to the cabochon I will want the longer wire to be closer to the desk and the shorter wire is the one that's going to circle around on the face of the cabochon. So what I want to do now is start drawing those two wires gently together as I finish that weave off. Let's just push that up out of the way slightly and it can be quite subtle or it can be quite strong. It's up to you how you feel. So I'm just going to draw that together. That looks like it will work to me. If you need it to come together more strongly then you absolutely can just apply a very little bit of warmth and heat to that wire just to bring it closer. So I'm going to do just the one side and I'll do the other side in exactly the same way but in mirror and I'll do that off camera in just a moment. So I'm going to wrap in exactly the same way three times around the one wire and then three times around the opposing wire until we have a wrap that meets probably about 95% of the way around the edges of your cabochon. So that's one and let's just poke that leading edge through two and go again, poke that leading edge through and three. And I think probably once I've tightened this up on the front on that shorter wire, I'm going to finish off with three wraps, two and three. And that will probably be nice and tight enough to sit up towards the top of that cabochon. So I'm going to leave that attached for the moment in case I need to add any more weaving. But what we're looking to do is to bring those two wires closer together with the shorter length, the one that was eight inches in length, up on the top as we're looking at it. So I've gently tapered the weave towards the end to bring those two wires together. The shorter one again is on top and the longer one is at the back of the design or underneath. And we'll head back down to the board now and show you how to shape that around the car, around the cabochon rather and get that finished off. So you can see the tapering of the weave there. And I'm going to use now a very specialist tool it's not a specialist tool at all, it's a torch. And I'm going to start in the centre of that section of weave and just push those wires around evenly. This torch is just a little bit larger than the base of my cab, but what I'm looking to do is to get a nice rounded shape to begin with. This gives me something to work with. You can use a ring mandrel if you have one. What we're going to do now, ensuring that that shorter wire is up top, and the longer wire is at the back, we're going to just very, very gently use our thumbs to push that shorter wire inwards. Those wires can cross over at the top. It does help if they do. And we're just looking to start forming that around the chosen cabochon. So you can see this is much larger than we need, but it does give us a place to start. What you don't want to do is to be too rough or heavy handed at this stage because we're working with a relatively light wire, 18 gauge wire, especially for me, I'm working in raw copper, which is beautifully soft. I don't want to mangle this. So I want to be quite subtle and make small movements, but you can see how the upper wire, the shorter wire, it's crossed over up at the top there, which is what we want it to do, but also it's starting to push into the middle and it's just by using my thumbs to generate that lovely shape. What we're going to do now is offer the cab inside and make sure that we've made our wrap section deep enough. What we're looking for is a basket that will house our cab from the front and it will not let it pass through. So the shorter wire, once it's crossed over up at the top, needs to be smaller than the cabochon itself so that it acts as a basket. So let's just pop that back over to the side for now and continue manoeuvring these wires until they sit exactly where we want them to. Now the reason I've left these little tails of wire attached is in case you wanted to wrap that weave just a little bit further up to the top. For me, I'm quite happy. What I'm going to do is just trim these away and I want the end points to be as close to where it would cross onto the surface of the cab as possible because that means it's less likely to cause you issues in wear. So you can just orient that however it is best for you so that you can trim those tails away. It's still useful offcuts. Those sorts of lengths will always be useful just for tying bits of wire together. I'm just going to tighten up the ends of those weaves and make sure that there's no sticky outy bits. So let's flip this back over and see how we're looking. Now, if you did truncate those wires early and you've got a great big gap up at the top, 
this weave is fabulous because you can just stretch it out a little bit it's the benefit of having an open weave that rather than a completely closed up weave so if I just gently push that over at the top we're going to see how easy it is to make this fit so I'm overall quite ho happy with the form that we're taking it's a little bit of slightly wonky wire just here so you can attach attack that with your pliers if you wish and just get that a little bit smoother to shape you can of course also move that weave around if it's slightly lower on one side than on the other so the next thing that we want to do is take our shorter truncated front wires and attach them to those longer rear wires it's much easier to do that once you have an idea of the overall finished basket size that you're looking for so I'm just going to keep playing with this until I'm happy and I'm just pulling those two short front wires until they cross over at the top and I can see visually that the cabochon cannot possibly escape through the front basket that we've made once I'm happy with that position I'm going to turn those upper wires gently to the side so I know where I've made that subtle angular change is where I want those wires to cross over and then attach to these wires at the back so if I move those out of the way, I'm going to pinch this very, very firmly in position and then I'm going to take a bend on that front wire so that it goes across the back where I want that whole thing to be tied off. So you just need to get your pliers onto just the front wire and push that down. Let's get that cabochon back into position. I can see that my cab has got no way of escaping through the front of this basket setting and that's what we're looking for we're looking for security so let's just flip the design over for a second and you can see that we've got way more wire than we need at this stage because all we're going to do is loop those wires across and around the rear wires so we're just going to cut those relatively short Let's take that to, in millimetres, it will probably be about an 8 millimetre length of wire, which you can trim further if you need to. If you think that's a little bit excessive, you can take that back closer. So what we're looking to do now, let's just bring that into frame a little bit better. I might just turn that up and out of the way so I can get it closer to the board for you. So what we're looking to do is to turn this angle into a loop around the rear wire so I'm just going, to, just going to do that very very slowly and cautiously now you can see that there's quite a lot of excess wire there we don't need that eight millimeters so it's easier to take off another three millimeters or so and then close that loop up so I'm just going to take the very last little bit of that loop and push it around push it back on itself so that it meets like so and it is fully enclosing the long wire at the back so we need to do the same on the other side so I'm going to trim again a little bit off you can always trim a little bit extra off it's very difficult to put wire back on though let's just get that out of the way shall we so what we're going to do is again take that little end bit twist it around so that you're creating a loop that sits around I'm just doing that little bit by little bit so that it loops, oops, sorry, oops, Daisy. It loops around the long wire that sits at the back of the basket. So I'm just going to tighten those both down and make sure that the end of that wire touches the piece of wire that's in front. So it loops around and touches back on itself. So let's just pop that down to the board for a second. And you can see that we've got that basket where the rear wire, which was the long wire, is around the same size as the outside edges of the cab and the front wire makes this lovely pear drop shape over the face of the cabochon and it doesn't need to cover a huge amount of the cab but you do need to be sure that that's not going to escape through the basket that you've created so overall whilst that's imperfect once it's set by the way it won't be obviously you can take it out and post it through as it just did by itself for a moment but once you've wired that in with a corset on the back it won't have that ability so obviously I'm sitting here saying oh yeah don't let it go through the front and there it goes popping through the front well yes it will do that until you wire it into position so overall I'm quite happy with that shape you can take a little bit extra time wise just to smooth that around make sure that there's no funny little angles that you don't like the look of you can adapt that as you please 
let's just view that from the front I'm actually really happy with how that's turned out and then you've got these uprights to deal with so what I like to do is just bring them slightly closer together and put a fairly definitive angle on them and if I just open those up at the top like so all I would do is a figure of eight weave drawing those two together and then create a very very simple bale which is what I've done here is a figure of eight weaved enough of a weave to go around a pencil which is plenty large enough for any chain loop to go through and then just tied that back on itself with a coil on the front so that's a relatively simple way that you can finish this design off so I'm not going to show you the bale as I've shown you thousands of those over the last several years what I will do though is show you how to start off sitting your cabochon into the basket and then you can finish off the bale at leisure so in this instance I'm going to again be working with 0.4 millimeter which is equivalent to 26 gauge I'll probably pop the cabochon out to start with and again I'll probably cut around about a 15 inch length and I'm just going to start that off up on one of the shoulders I'm looking at the rear of the design right now I'll probably post the end through like so and then wrap that around now because I did a three and three weave I'll probably stick to that same number to begin with aesthetically that makes most sense to me you could go for a five if you wanted to and then bring that up to the top what we're looking for is security so an absolute minimum of three I would say let's get that in the scrap pot and then we're just going to tighten up that coil we've made around the rear side of the housing the basket housing we've created give that a squish to make sure it's nice and secure now once I've got a good solid foothold with the end of the wire I can pop my cabochon back in and then I'm just going to push that over the rear side of the design. Now you can go for a really elegant corset. I went for a very fast set corset here. So this is very, very functional. You can go for something a lot more elaborate and pretty if you want to. There are a number of different ways that you can finish the back of a cabochon. But I'm going to show you a super fast setting. So to begin with, the cab is likely to slide around. I'm going to take the tail of wire and just pass that through that outside of the setting so we're looking at the back we're going to pass it just once through here and then I'm going to pull that nice and firm as if I'm lacing up a corset and then going to take the wire to the other side and again push the tip of the wire up inside that outer setting which was the longer lengths of wire and then we're just going to ensure that we're not leaving any bagginess in our corset weave on the back of course it wants to pop out because I'm trying to show you something what we're looking to do is pull that nice and firmly into position without distorting the frame in any way so that's a reasonably straight line it's not perfectly straight and again as I said earlier you can take a bit more time to make sure that everything's super straight and smooth and then I'm just going to go from side to side in exactly the same way drawing the wire smoother and firmer but not so firm that you distort the shape of that outer setting pull that nice and neatly and tidily now instead of coming straight back up as I did with this one you can mirror image that corset weave if you wish to which is slightly more attractive it takes an extra minute maybe so I'm going to just zigzag back in the opposite direction now and this again was around about 15 inches of wire which is plenty for a cabochon of this size the cabochon I'm using is approximately 40 mil I'm just going to rotate that around to make it easier for me to hold the cab and then it's just a case of zigging and a zagging which is a very common design in the corset weave as it reflects what you're doing with your zigzag or your figure of eight weave so let's take that to the opposite side pull that nice and firmly into position and then we can finish off up at the top by wrapping three times around that frame again so let's just push that cab until it sits exactly where we want it to and what you can do is try and reflect the symmetrical point to where you cast on your design so just up here might be nicer to take it just over the top there pull that one through and we're just going to finish off with a three wrap so that we know our lovely little azurite is nice and tightly firmly inescapably attached into our very very easy basket cabochon set so make sure you're cutting the correct wire like so 
what I would want to do is take a little bit of extra time and trim that as close as I could possibly get it to the inside of the frame, give it a squish and make sure it's neat and tidy. So that will now pass the shake test. What you hear is my watch clanking around, it's not the design itself. So all you would do then is your bale of choice. You can go for something super simple like a figure of eight weave. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed the easy basket cabochon setting design. I really, really enjoy making these and if I'm ever at a loss for things to do, I tend to revert back to this. It's a simplistic design that's absolutely acceptable to beginners in wire work, but it does give you a real sense of achievement to know that you've just used wire to set your beautiful cabochon into a gorgeous pendant design, however simple it might be. Have yourself a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you back here again very soon. Bye for now.